Hey guys, welcome, welcome, welcome to another Transfer Express webinar. We're gonna try a little bit of different format today and I'm gonna be live with you here down in the little video corner, wherever I'm at on your screen, uh, the entire time here. So uh, my name is Dave. If you have not been to a webinar or haven't seen any of our YouTube videos, uh, I am really proud to be an educator here with Stalls and Transfer Express, helping you and your t-shirt business. I'm gonna say that not just me, but the entire team here is dedicated to helping you and your business, not just profit, but thrive. And so we want to provide you all of the tools uh, and tips and inspiration to really help your business grow. Uh, it's not just me today. I do have uh, Mike behind the scenes in the chat section. Uh, so he'll be moderating that chat over on the right hand side of your screen. And you're going to be able to uh, leave any questions and comments. It's really the beauty of this format as a webinar to be interactive. We want to be here to help you guys out. And I see everybody coming in here. So if you have any questions along the way or we're going too fast or you want us to clarify something uh, or even maybe something unrelated, Mike is going to be able to link you uh, in there. I want to try to keep this webinar right about an hour. So I'm going to try to stay focused on the material, but I do have the chat right here with us. Uh, thank you guys for joining us here today. But hello, I want to welcome everybody now that everybody's here uh, to this webinar. Now we're going to be covering a ton of stuff today. The title is Insider Application Tips uh, for Your Heat Transfers, but we're gonna get into a little bit more. Everything we're covering today is built to help you and your business succeed, just like everybody here at Transfer Express is all about. I wanna keep this to an hour, so let's get rolling right here into our content today. Now we're gonna be getting into the secret success recipe. It really is no secret, but it's stuff that you need to keep in your mind every single time you're turning on your heat press uh, to be able to get perfect results every single time. We're also gonna be talking about temperature adjustments. We're gonna be talking about pressure and what pressure you're at. So how to tell depending on whatever heat press you have, what pressure your press is at, because it's very important. Uh, we're gonna talk about dealing with obstructions and overcoming them. There's a few ways that you could do it, maybe a few ways that you've seen other people do it, and I'll tell you the way that you should be doing it. I'm actually gonna tell you like three ways you could do it. So stay tuned. <laughs> and then we're also gonna be talking about briefly on some positioning tips. Because when we're talking about application, if we're printing a left chest or a center chest and we're printing it a little bit too low, that's not a perfect application. So I want this entire hour together, I want you to be confident and very capable in your heat press decorating capabilities to nail retail ready professional grade apparel. And that's really what I love about heat presses. I came from the traditional printing industry where I've been working with screen printing, offset printing, large format and sticker printing for well over a decade now. But one thing with the heat press is it makes it so absolutely simple. Uh, when I first started screen printing in my house, I was pulling squeegees and ink and spraying emulsion out and cleaning screens in the bathtub. Uh, and it was just a hassle and a mess. And it took me three, four weeks of actually trying after work every day and being frustrated to get a retail ready, like quality result. And heat transfers were the way to do that. I just wish I had known about them back then. It would have saved so much frustration, so much time, and been so much easier on my wallet because everything that I spent on screens and emulsions and inks and squeegees, I could have literally just invested that money into one heat press and had retail ready results right out of the gate. So with these application tips, we're gonna talk about that. Now we're also gonna talk about what not to use. There's a ton of accessories floating around there, uh, but for predominantly digital and screen printed transfers is what we're gonna be talking about today. So there's a few accessories that you should pretty much never use with screen printed or digital transfers, and I'll tell you why. So let's get right into it here. Now, this is the secret, the secret sauce for perfect application every single time. It's time temperature, and pressure. So those three things are your tripod, your trifecta of heat printing. Every single time, you're going to wanna to make sure that you have all of those set. If you do not set your time and you're set on your temperature and your pressure, you're going to have a bad time. The same as if you just have your time and temperature set and you don't check your pressure, you could also have a bad time. Now, pressure is, usually if you have your time wrong or your temperature wrong, the transfer will fail immediately. The thing with pressure, is that it could be that that kind of uh, that hard thing to troubleshoot because you might print the entire run of shirts absolutely fine, no problem. 
but the first few times you go to wash them, you might see some premature cracking. You might see uh, some issues with the transfers peeling up, and that's that's why pressure is so important. It could be that the uh, I don't kind of Trojan horse that uh, that you you never saw coming. So always be sure to be checking your pressure. Very very uh, very very hard. Kathy, left chest logos are your nemesis. I want to show you an easy way to do it here uh, in this webinar uh, in just a little bit. So time, temperature, pressure, always. Now, the one major thing about this is that this changes depending on what transfer type you're printing on. Here at Transfer Express, every single transfer order that you order from us will come with a transfer application instruction sheet. Always follow the instructions on that sheet. Because if you're, if you're printing goof proof, goof proof applies at 365 degrees for four to six seconds. Uh, you don't have to memorize that, <laughs> but I memorize it because I, I use it all the time. 365 degrees, four to six seconds with a medium to firm pressure every single time on 100% cotton. Now say you're printing on 100% polyester, that 365 is pretty high, so we could apply at 325. But if you're not reading carefully, if you're trying to apply at 325 degrees on say cotton instead of polyester, it's gonna have it's gonna have an issue applying. So 365, four to six seconds, always just follow the instructions. Now, if I switch over to say a glow in the dark specialty effect ink, Halloween's coming up here, and I wanna be able to print some cool glow in the dark, uh, you know, trick or treating bags or something, that's gonna apply at 340 degrees. So if I'm applying at 365 degrees, I might be over melting, the, over curing the adhesive on that. Uh, and the pressure stays the same, the time is very similar, but I think the time even goes up to 10 seconds. So if I'm applying at four to six seconds at 340, you see here, that things could start becoming an issue when you are not following the instructions. So always make sure you're following the instructions. That is the recipe on your instruction sheet. And that is the, the first step to having a perfect application. So always check those, those, uh, uh, those specs, time, temperature, and pressure. So time's really easy. Most heat presses are very, very super easy to be able to uh, set your temperature. So we're not going to get too much in or set your time. I'm sorry, not too much into that. But when we start talking about temperature, that's where things could get a little squirrely. So you always want to be able to make sure that you are testing the temperature uh, intermittently. If you get a brand new heat press, it might be good to, to test the pressure or test the temperature immediately because sometimes out of the factory, they're just calibrated wrong uh, or in some conversion from Celsius to Fahrenheit, depending on where they were manufactured, that you run into some issues with them being the wrong temperature, but there's several ways to do this. On these slides here, you see a IR thermometer. I have one here with me right here. Uh, and these are super simple, easy to pick up. I love them because I test the temperature of my house all the time with it. Uh, when me and my wife fight over the thermostat setting <laughs> that I could test the house and see how accurate it is. So these are cool to have around uh, and they work really good for your heat press as well. Um, also, we have our heat press test strips. So this guy's about uh, 20 bucks, uh, but I'll tell you here in a minute that it's not the most accurate. So that's where these heat press test strips come in. Now, of course, if you want a thermometer that's going to accurately measure the temperature of your heat press, you have to go for a probe thermometer. And they usually have a flat, flat little bulbous end on the end so that you could touch it to things. Uh, but those are usually about 120 to 140 bucks. Whereas one of these, I think I picked this up on Amazon for like 25 or 30 bucks. This isn't the same one that everybody's used to with the COVID days, uh, you know, making sure you don't have a fever. Uh, it's a little bit more in tune. See, I'm 94 degrees. I would be having a problem if I was at 94 degrees compared to that. Um, but these are a great way to get contact temperatures under pressure on your heat press without spending a ton of money. Now, these are included in our application kit, or you could just buy these at transferexpress.com. I think there are a few other uh, manufacturers that make them out there on the internet, uh, but I haven't seen one cheaper than how we sell them. And we sell them in these big packs so that you could actually test a whole bunch of your heat press, not just uh, like one spot. So even when you're when you're test testing here, I'll actually show you here. We're going to jump. Uh, let's jump over here to our, um, our heat press, and I will show you here that... Um, that we have our test strips and our thermometer. So here's our, our probe or our, our IR thermometer. Now, one thing about this is you just point up, I'll point into the middle and I'll see that I'm reading at about 355 degrees. Here's 340 right up on the edge. Down here, if you could see where my little laser pointer is actually pointing, 344, here's 352. Up here is another 350. And right back in the middle is another 355. Now I'm set to 365 degrees. 
on my press back here, if you could see that. So uh, I am a little low according to my thermometer right here. Now, the thing is, is that we have a nonstick coating actually on this heating element. Uh, uh, most heat presses, even if you don't have a Hotronics heat press like this auto clam we have here, any Amazon presses usually have a nonstick coating on this heating element as well. Now, what that's going to do is actually reflect and diffuse some of the IR light so it's not making it back in here. So you're always, I mean, I don't want to say always, but you're typically going to be real low on the actual temperature that it's reading. So I usually say about uh, 10, 15, sometimes even 20 degrees that you're not going to be able to pick up. So that could be an issue on here. So this is a great ballpark. If you're just trying to make sure you're in the, uh, the right range, this will get you there for super cheap. Now, these are our heat press test strips. They're actually going to fill in when you get them on the sheet. Now, one thing I like to do is how you test these is these are just pretty much stickers. So you could kind of just uh, uh, see if I could peel this up. So they peel up and you just have one here. So I just peeled it up off the sheet. And what you would do then is take it to a piece of a cover sheet. So just a piece of paper and you could stick these down to a piece of paper and then just close the press on them, right? And when you close the press, it's actually going to fill in and it's going to show you. I actually think I have a slide showing you. But what I like to do is I'll cut this piece of paper up into a whole bunch of different pieces. So I have one in the middle of the press. So one right in the middle of the press and then one on every corner. So I know if there's any weird cold spots on the press uh, that I have identified where they are and say like it's set to 365 and so we're here at 360, 360, 360 and up here on this front side, it's only temping at 350 because I think, uh, yes, there's settings from 340 all the way up to 380. So it's gonna tell you how accurate your press is in there. But it'll tell you if you have a cold spot and you could either avoid printing on it or maybe it's time to replace the heat press or something like that. Uh, but at least you know about it because knowing is half the battle, right? Knowledge is power. So we want to make sure that, that we are uh, being able to get all that stuff right. So let me go back here to our slides. Um, and I'll pull us back up here. And I'm back here too. All right. So with these, this is what it's going to look like when it starts filling in. So like this one right here, 360 degrees right there in the middle, they actually fill in. So that's one really cool thing to do uh, when you have these. Now, uh, there is, um, yeah, we do have our application kit and they're included in our application kit or they're just on transferexpress.com in the whole pack, like what I just showed you here. Um, I think it's, yeah, they come in this little envelope, the little thermo labels, uh, and you can pull them right off. But we do have a bundle pack with that application kit, which I'll tell you about more in here in just a little bit. So essentially using these, just like I was talking about, you set your heat press to any set temperature. 360 is really good because it's right in the middle. Number one, it's right in that range that Goofproof applies at, which is my favorite screen printed transfer with Plastisol inks. So you'll take that, set it to 360, and then it's going to tell you if your heat press is too hot or too low. Um, Tim, if you're looking to calibrate temperature on a Fusion uh, IQ, uh, hit up Hotronics. Hotronics has a whole bunch of guides that walk you through setting up and calibrating your heat press, uh, and they are going to be able to help you out on that the most efficiently, and they're even going to get your model number and stuff too. So if there's any weird quirks with the specific unit that you have or, or the specific firmware that was set up running on your press, they're going to be able to identify that too. So they could fix everything for you. But always contact Hotronics directly. Uh, they have an entire service team that they are, they have that award-winning support that's going to walk you through anything. I actually had uh, an issue with our auto clam that I have right here. Uh, and within a couple hours, it was diagnosed and a replacement part was on the way covered under warranty. So uh, that's, it's just awesome service. Always reach out to them. Uh, and they're available not 24-7, but uh, a lot. They're, 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 uh, I don't know their exact times because they just changed them, uh, but they are here to help you out. So go around over there. And I think they have a 24-7 chat now over on the Hotronics website for a whole bunch of troubleshooting issues uh, as well. But these things, uh, especially the Fusion, really, really simple uh, right through it. I've never actually have calibrated the Fusion, and it's very simple through the interface on that. Um, Let's see, let's see. I just wanna make sure um, that we are going through this. Yeah, Tracy just said, learn that our heat press is reading 30 degrees hotter than set. And that's exactly one of the issues that you could have. You could be over curing inks and now you just compensate. Well, if you're trying to hit that 365 degree temperature, you're compensating 30 degrees lower. And that's something that's really going to help your application out. So that's awesome to identify that. Knowledge is power, right? Um, 
Let's see, Aaron, is there a way to fix if there's a colder spot? Unfortunately, not really. So what that could be is it could be a short in the heating coil. Uh, and so either the heating element needs to be replaced, uh, but you'll see it commonly on a lot of lower end, uh, lower cost heat presses. Just because uh, if I take you over here, if you could kind of see in the little picture here that uh, the, the Hotronics heat presses have a coil that goes back and forth uh, in kind of like an elongated S or E shape all the way from the base all the way up. So the heating coil is all set uh, pretty much the entire way in there. It's cast into a, uh, if you could see here, it goes about an inch up. The actual heating element itself is quite thick. So it holds a nice even heat. It's like a, a cast iron skillet almost. And the heating coil is completely inset inside of it. So it's completely cast around. The heating coil is uh, submerged, if you will, right into this entire sheet of metal. Now on some cheaper heat presses, you'll see an X or just uh, like one big S or like an E shape on it, which is going to give you some of those cold spots. So that's why... Uh, you get what you pay for a lot of times with heat presses. Uh, and so Hotronics, obviously a little bit on the higher end, but completely worth the investment, not only for the quality that you get from them and the longevity of a heat press like a Hotronics press, but the frustration and time you save too with not having to fiddle with temperature and knowing that the entire team is here to support uh, your product and help you troubleshoot any issues and the warranties on these machines back them up. You are covered. I mean, it's like a better warranty than Kia. This thing is covered toe to toe. Um, and like I said, this press here, I think we've had in the studio for coming up on five or six years now. And uh, there's been one fuse issue with it that was diagnosed and replaced in a day, completely under warranty. So um, that was easy, easy as pie to fix. So there's other features of the Hotronics press that I want to get into too, uh, a little bit later which is another reason to buy a Hotron Express. But this isn't a commercial for Hotron Expresses. This is a commercial for you having great application, okay? So let's go. Uh, I just want to scroll back up in the comments and see that we'll be in here. Um, Anthony, having issues with ultra-color soft, should I not use it on poly? It actually works fantastic on poly. What I would recommend is going back to the time, temperature, and pressure, making sure they're all set. If you don't have firm pressure, you're gonna have a bad time. And also too, one thing on those application sheets, and I'm gonna to get to it here in just a little bit, is there is one additional step, but it really depends on the transfer why I didn't include it in the, success, the recipe for success, and that is a hot or cold peel. So if you have a hot peel transfer, that means peel hot immediately when the press opens. And a cold peel, like Ultra Color Soft, you need to wait until that transfer is completely cool. Otherwise, you're gonna start separating that adhesive before it's completely bonded to the fabric and you're gonna have uh, those issues with the application. I'm 100% polyester though, it is one of the most rock solid applications. Sometimes even if you're pulling it off the heat press, uh, it might kinda lift in some areas. So you just have to be careful that you're, that you're pulling it off nice and straight and then laying it flat so that no corners are peeling while it is hot. And then once that completely cools, you rip it off just like a Band-Aid, super, super easy application on that. Also, if you are trying everything and you're ensuring that you're following the instructions and you've watched the application video on YouTube and you say, this still is not working, the entire team here at Transfer Express is here for you. Please submit a resolution in your dealer dashboard because then we can look at the date your order was produced. We could see what adhesives were on it. We even keep samples of all the orders so we could go to the bin and be able to pull your transfers. Or if something happened in shipping or something looks wrong, we'll have you send the transfers back. And we wanna take care of you. We're not gonna leave you out there and we're not gonna be like, well, that's your problem. No, regardless of what heat press you have, not even a Hotron Express, we wanna support you and have you have a great experience with our transfers. And we will even test them for you too, to ensure that they are printed properly and that you could have great experience applying any of them from Ultra Color Soft to Goof Proof to Ultra Color Max, or even the new Ultra Color Pro. We are here to help you have a great application. Everything that I'm going over today is just built to help you get that first step into not, not, you know, not having to call us, not having to wait on us, but we are here if you need us for any reason. We are always here for you uh, to help your business out. Um, let's see. How long do you have to wait for a cold peel? How long is too long? Christine asks. For a cold peel, there is no too long. You could leave it to the next day. You could leave it uh, as, as long as you want. What I usually recommend is it takes, uh, if you just say pull a transfer off the heat press and lay it down, it takes about four to five minutes for that to come to complete room temperature without any uh, rubbing on it. Sometimes you could rub 
uh, some of the heat off of it, or some people hold it up to a window, but I think holding it up to a window to cool it down or a wall or a filing cabinet puts friction on the transfer while it's still hot. So I usually like just letting them sit. If you're doing a whole run of shirts, I like to do the run and maybe in batches. So you're not doing the full run, but you're doing five or six and then going back to peel. And then by the time you get through peeling all of them, you're ready for the next batch. But uh, yeah, there really is no too long. What the key is that I always look for is that it feels room temperature, which when you touch things that are room temperature, usually typically they feel a little bit cooler than your hand feels. Uh, so when you touch it, like this piece of paper here, if I touch it and it does not feel like it has any heat whatsoever anymore, then it's cold. So that is, uh, cold is really room temperature. Don't put it in the fridge or anything. <laughs> it doesn't have to be frozen or anything, not, not in there. Um, let's see. Um, if your heat press doesn't tell you the pressure, what is the most reliable way to know? Hey, we're going to get to that in just one second, Lisa. You're getting ahead of us, but it's 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 here. So we're talking about temperature and the temperature test strips that help you get there. You could get thermometers or the probe thermometer just to ensure that you're, get, you're, you're getting an accurate reading of your press. Uh, the IR one is okay, but like I said, it does have those reflective issues uh, to get it in there. So now we're talking about checking pressure. So Lisa, this one's for you. Even I saw Mike come in there. <laughs> yeah, John, don't freeze your shirts. Don't freeze your shirts. Uh, so checking pressure is a huge aspect to our heat pressing trinity. Uh, of course, time is fairly explanatory. Even if your timer doesn't work on your heat press, you can still set an external timer or go, Alexa, set a timer for two seconds. I don't know if she could go that low, but I know I do that all the time in my house. So uh, with this one, so what we see on the screen right here is the Hottronics Auto Clam, which is exactly the press that I have right here next to me. Right here. See my hands here, right here. <laughs> uh, so what you're going to want to do is the easiest way to do this is I like to do this every single time before I'm doing a full run of shirts with my first pre-press. So I'll put the garment on the press. So if we are printing a hoodie, a little bit thicker than a t-shirt. So if I would have just pressed with just the, uh, just the platen, not a shirt on the lower platen, and I'm just testing this one right here, uh, this is not going to give me an accurate pressure. So this one says I'm at a six right now on this, uh, on my little dial in there on the little uh, digital display. So the, uh, the six is what my pressure was reading at. You could see here uh, on the same model, the Hotronics Auto Clam right here on the slide that it's reading at a two. So a two is super low, uh, but I might be reading at a two with nothing on the platen. And then I put a hoodie on the platen and it's reading at an eight. So you always wanna do it with the apparel that you are printing, not like a test shirt, uh, the actual shirts that you're going to be doing your printing on, put it on the press like you're going to print it and test that, uh, test that temperature or test that pressure readout. One of the huge factors uh, that I do love, another feature of Hotronics presses is almost every single one from the, uh, I think the max line is the highest you could go without getting the digital pressure readout. So the auto clams, all of the fusions, the dual air fusions uh, all have the, the pressure readouts. And that just really helps eliminate a ton of guesswork uh, for you when you're uh, actually going to print your shirts. So a very, very important thing to, uh, to actually have on a press. But if you don't have that, Lisa, I'm still looking at you. Uh, if you don't have that on your press, there are other ways to ensure your pressure is correct. So uh, after this, you can see that, uh, that of course, uh, I'm actually gonna show you here over on our press. Uh, we'll, we'll switch to the fusion slide, but to adjust your pressure, every single press has a knob on top. Let me see if I can make myself bigger here. Um, and full screen so you could kind of see what I'm doing. So here we go. Here is our press and right here on top, we have our knob. If I turn it to the right, it makes the pressure higher. If I turn it to the left, it makes the pressure lower. So it's effectively raising and lowering the platen. Now, when you're shopping for a heat press, if you don't have a heat press already, an over the center uh, pressure is exactly where you actually want to be because that's gonna be even pressure from edge to edge because you're pushing all of your pressure down here in the center of the press. You can see that the entire press here is only connected to this upper platen. Of course, there's a uh, this is our, our cable connection on the back, but the only place that this upper platen is connected to the machine is right here in the middle with our pressure knob. So all of the pressure always is directly over the center of our platen, giving us nice, firm, even 
pressure across the entire area. Now, sometimes you'll see pressure knobs up back up here, uh, and then that's connected to the arm. So that sometimes works, uh, but you always want to make sure if the arm is connected back here, whoop, if the arm's connected back here and not over the center, that you're never going to have full even pressure. So you'll have higher pressure at the back of the press before the front of the press. The same with this auto clam. You can see that this has some wiggle room to it. So this is what they call a floating upper platen. So it does, if you could see, or you kind of see, but you can see it doesn't actually contact the lower platen until this is completely parallel to the lower platen. And then that last step, it all comes down at the same time. Now for a clamshell press, this is actually an awesome feature, uh, but for any swing away presses, you're usually uh, coming straight down on it anyway. You don't have to worry about that. Um, let's get back on over to our Fusion, because I don't have a Fusion model with us here, um, but let's get our slides pulled back up here for you so I could show you what a Fusion looks like. So the greatest thing about the uh, air fusion and the dual air fusion. So these are the air powered automatic heat presses. Uh, the regular fusion has a knob right on top the same. Uh, instead of just that little digital number where it displays what your pressure readout is, uh, it will actually tell you and you could set the range on the fusion IQ system in there. So it makes it really, really cool. So with the air fusion, you actually don't have to put a garment on the press. You just set the press to be whatever PSI you want. So instead of going a uh, pretty much a one to nine scale, uh, now you're going in the actual PSI. So like a nine would be 90 PSI, uh, apples to apples from machine to machine. Um, let's see. Um, and then, yeah, uh, I was just looking in the chat there, making sure I didn't miss anything. Uh, and then you need to actually set the pressure for both your first and your second press. So there are two steps uh, that you'll need to set. So if you want your pre-press to be a light pressure at maybe a 40 PSI or something, you absolutely could. And then set your actual press to be a uh, 80 PSI if you're printing with the goof proof transfers or whatever the application instructions say. Um, so uh, you do have to have that setting. But the best thing about those air presses is that regardless of what you have underneath of it, it's going to auto-regulate the temperature or auto-regulate the pressure for you. So if you set, uh, yes, I want it to be 60 PSI, and you throw a hoodie on that lower platen, it's pressing and it's gonna compensate for anything that you stack on that and push it to exactly that 60 PSI. So those air-powered machines for commercial operations, or even if you have an air compressor at home in your garage or something, and you're really looking to upgrade your heat press setup, that is the way to do it. So really, really cool. Um, let's see, Tim, moving from 16 by 22 and eight by 10 is pressure say a six or still a six on a smaller platen. It depends on what press press you are using. So an auto clam like we had right here that I was just showing you, absolutely that you're reducing that surface area. You could lighten up your pressure a little bit. There is a mathematical formula. I think they have it over on stalls.com and their help center resources where they actually kind of go through all of the different platens and tell you what the pressure kind of adjusts to. Uh, but you could run the math on it. I got into art and design in the printing industry because math is not my forte. <laughs> but it is all uh, all related based on area size and how much pounds per square inch you're putting down. So it does it does vary. So uh, that's why typically if you're if you're set to like a nine and you swap the platen out uh, and adjust it back to a nine, uh, you are actually putting a lot more than ninety psi down on just that little area. Now, for the air fusions that are auto adjusting, it will auto compensate for you. Uh, so it's going to compensate for those smaller platens uh, and the pressure areas when you're pushing down on it. But any other of the, the non-automatic presses, even the auto clam, even though it is a semi-automatic press, uh, it will not compensate that for you. So that is a great question. I'm glad you mentioned that because I don't have it anywhere here in my notes. So thank you for that. Uh, was that Tim? Tim, thanks, Tim. Um, let's see, what is the typical lifespan of an Hotronics IQ heat press? Man, that's a great question. Uh, over in the main building of Transfer Express, uh, I'm sure the team would know a little bit more than me, but I think we have uh, one of the swinger presses from, oh, the 90s, and it is still kicking. So 25 years, 25 years, that thing's still kicking. I think it's had a few fuses replaced in its life, lifetime, but uh, I know at least the majority of people actually prefer pressing on it because it is just such an awesome press to use. It has old like payphone numbers on the front of it. It looks really old, but it still gets the job done after all this time. Sure, the Hotronics presses now have all the bells and whistles. The Auto Clam here is by far my absolute favorite press 
that we sell. It is just a rock solid piece of machinery. Uh, and I love the auto open feature. I don't need the draw. I come from the screen printing world, so I'm used to loading upside down uh, and kind of leaning away so you're not in your head on any of the automatic press equipment, the squeegee bars and stuff. Uh, so I just, I love working on this thing on the caddy stand that's adjustable. It's fully threadable. Uh, and for 1800 bucks, I can match like the capacity and, and throughput of probably the dual air fusion, but that's me humble brag. <laughs> I get to, I get to flex that I'm on camera this time for the webinar, <laughs> but, uh, yes. Yeah, so we're talking checking pressure here on the, uh, the fusion and let's keep it going. Let's keep it going. Thank you guys again for joining in and tuning in. I'm always floored by you guys uh, dedicating time to better your business. And that is just really, really cool. Uh, and I'm happy to be here and be a resource for you guys. Uh, so keep it up. Thumbs up to you and your business. Really, really, uh, really, really happy for you. Um, and really pumped, really pumped that you're here on a Thursday afternoon. So Lisa, this is where, this is where we wanna talk about. Now this is checking the pressure of your heat press if you do not have a pressure readout. So typically, uh, like say you're doing screen printed transfers, you could go with a medium to firm pressure. Uh, there's no adhesive that's going to say spill out from underneath the material, like say like a vinyl. So if you over apply a vinyl with too much pressure, pretty much any medium to firm pressure, uh, you really wanna go light to medium. Uh, you'll actually have the adhesive kind of like, it, it squirts out the sides. So you're pushing so hard down on the vinyl and hitting it with such heat uh, that the adhesive is going to leave a little halo around the, the actual material. You don't want that to happen. So uh, with screen printed transfers, you don't have that and you actually need that firm pressure to push it down into the garment. So I always err more on the side of firm pressure than uh, light pressure when you're printing any digital or screen printed transfers. Now, Ultra Color Max is kind of the uh, that's our direct to film transfer. And that is the only real exception to any transfer at Transfer Express uh, that kind of goes more down into that medium range. You can hit that with a lot of pressure and start really affecting the way that the adhesive works on it. Uh, so I usually, you could stay in that five to seven range and have a great time. Even if you go up to an eight, you're gonna be fine. If you start overloading over a hundred PSI, you're probably going to see adhesive start spilling out from the edge of the transfer and you wanna avoid that. So just stay in that, I mean, yeah, yeah. Follow what, what the instructions say, right? The application <laughs> instructions. So whatever it says uh, for the, whatever material you're pressing, make sure it's set to that. But for screen printed and digital transfers, if you don't have dollar bills, like our dollar bill manual check test that I'm gonna touch up based on here, uh, you could always just max the pressure out as high as it goes on your press until it's really hard to close back it off a little bit until it could close. And then that's usually gonna be a firm pressure. But even more bulletproof is going to be just taking a piece of paper or dollar bills and go ahead and uh, put these on here. So uh, you're gonna put your shirt on the press again, as I just cut these things up. I'm gonna tell you all about what we're gonna do and then we'll actually get into it. So you put your shirt on the press, use uh, $4 bills. Uh, so, or four pieces of paper, like I'm cutting out right here. I'm just cutting one of our cover sheets up. So we sell these in 10 packs or they're included in our application kit. Uh, and they come in handy for doing exactly this. They are not going to burn up uh, and they are perfect for using on your heat press. If you're especially printing something, say like you already have a left chest design and you're trying to apply a name over here uh, and you need to cover this design, these sheets are awesome. And with how cheap they are, they're so easy to just cut up exactly like I'm doing right now and be able to uh, cover any of those designs or, you know, and they, they last. They're kind of more similar to like butcher or craft paper, uh, but they are specifically designed for heat pressing and these do not block heat. I'm gonna talk about cover sheets here in just a minute uh, and them blocking heat. And these are what we found block the least amount of heat. You don't need cover sheets for screen printed transfers anyway, uh, only those cold peel transfers like we were talking about. Um, let's see here. So uh, then you're gonna close the press like you're gonna press your shirt with your with your shirt on it. Um, and then you're gonna pull on each on, on each dollar bill or piece of paper on the corner. And if you could pull them out, it's too light. If it is very firm to pull out and it takes a lot of struggle to pull out, your, prob your pressure is probably just right there on that. And if you can't move them at all, that's good. You have a firm pressure set. So that's how you get that medium to firm pressure. Um, let's see. Brenda, I don't know what the GSM is on these. I, th I think we have it listed at transferexpress.com. Uh, they are not too heavy, um, but I don't know. I wanna say it's like a 180. 
So they're fairly light, but um, don't quote me on that. Uh, and I could get back to you. Maybe Mike could find that information on the product page and be able to get that to you. Mike, if I got 180, you owe me something. That was a, that was a really good guess on my part um, or just up here. So after all that happens, that's it. And you can turn the pressure knob to adjust your pressure uh, on and on. So let's see. I have a quick slip pad protector here on our press. Let's go uh, full screen. So let me, let me cut these slides out here for just one second for you. And we're over here at our heat press. So essentially what you're going to do, I only cut one or two out here. So let me cut a few more as we're on our press. But what you could do is just... Uh, Essentially, what you want to do is have enough surface area on or off. So kind of the size of a dollar bill, just kind of rough cutting the size of a dollar bill here. Um, and then you're going to put them half on, half off. Uh, so we'll go all there on all four corners. Like I was talking about being easy to go on and off. Uh, that's the way to do it. Whoop. And I'm dropping stuff on the floor. So here we are at, what are we at on our press? Uh, we're at five. So we're pretty light pressure and I can pull these right out. So that's, that's no good. So that tells us that we're not a firm enough pressure. So here, and I also have a quick slip pad protector, which always complicates things. I really should have a garment on this press to test this out. So even now I'm at an eight, and I could, I could kind of pull it out by struggling a little bit, but what you wanna do is then you wanna test all corners. That's tight. Man, that one's not moving. Even back over here in the back, not moving. So I know that I'm at an eight on my pressure right up here, and these things aren't moving. So that is a great way to test your pressure. So Lisa, this is how you test your pressure if you're unsure of printing. Now, one thing too, if you're doing huge runs, there are small vibrations with closing and opening the press that's happening. So you may have to uh, check your pressure every now and then uh, when you are actually doing your run, just to ensure, and that takes nothing, you know, just before a, a print run, throw them up on the top, maybe not even all four corners, just throw them up at the top and go, can I pull these out? If I tear them out, that's good. We were at a good enough pressure on that. So really, really cool stuff uh, and really important to keep in mind when you're printing if you don't have that digital readout. Now, like I mentioned, really cool of Hotronics to include them, but of course, not uh, absolutely always needed. If you could work through a few different uh, different other things. If I could click start these slides again, there we go and get back up. I'm gonna go back to the chat just to help. Um, let's see, Steve says, when doing polyester or dry fit shirts after I put transfer on, um, I don't know what you're talking about here, Steve. I feel like I'm coming in halfway on the conversation, um, but you might be talking about um, something else. I can't see in there, Helene. Uh, silk screener here too, love heat press, less messy, absolutely. No inks, no emulsion, no cleanup, no squeegee density, no off contact, no learning curve. So, I mean, I've, I've screen printed for way too many years from cards or from paper uh, to apparel to card, car, I printed on cardboard. I've done a ton of different substrates and man, heat pressing is just so much easier, so much quicker. And if you're doing huge runs of manual screen printing, if you just have a manual heat press or a manual sc uh, screen printing press at home, uh, that takes a toll physically uh, day in and day out of printing large runs of shirts. And doing it on a heat press is so much easier. You still have to pull the arm down, but it's not that continuous motion. Your back's not aching at the end of the day, uh, or at least mine hasn't been yet. Uh, maybe I just built up my stamina with screen printing before I got on uh, the the heat heat printing side of things so much easier so much less mess uh, and I mean luckily my wife still married me but uh, when we were just dating I was spraying out ink and emulsion in a bathtub so um, making a mess and saying hey uh, the screens are exposing in the bathroom because it was the only ex interior room without windows so like oh no if you go in there you're going to ruin my screens that are drying uh, with emulsion on them so you can't expose those screens don't go in the bathroom for another hour or two yeah she still married me. Love my wife. <laughs> so let's see here. Um, yeah, hardest thing about all is getting the pressure correct. And this is one way to do it, uh, just to ensure that your pressure is correct, uh, just to see where it is on there. Um, William, can we have the link for the platen size pressure compensation info? Um, yes, we're gonna uh, we're gonna see if that uh, if that chart exists on stalls. I'm sure Mike's looking for it right now. Um, if not, we could email you after this webinar uh, and and get that information in that little conversion chart over to you. I believe it's made. I I feel like I've seen it before. Um, let's see here. I just want to make sure I'm getting all this. Um, it looks like Mike is really jumping in and helping you guys out too. 
Um, let's see. Let's see. Always, uh, Anthony asks, you always use a cover sheet on cold peel transfers. The majority of cold peel transfers you will want to use a cover sheet on. There are a few cold peel transfers that we sell that have a paper uh, like carrier. There's a paper backing on them and they're not on like a plastic or PET carrier, which you don't have to worry about static. And those do not recommend using a cover sheet like glitter does not recommend using a cover sheet. Uh, but always just look at the instructions that come with the transfer, uh, the transfer that type that you bought. Uh, and it will say if it needs a cover sheet, we're going to actually give you one with your order. So if your order comes with a cover sheet, you probably need to use it. Uh, but if it doesn't, then you don't need to. But always just check the instructions for the specific transfer type, because I'm going to confuse you talking about all the different transfer types, and I'm not going to remember it. You're not going to remember it when the time comes. So it's always best to just check those instructions on there. Um, Chrissy, yes, this is going to be recorded. If you have to run, that's A-OK. -okay. And that was, uh, I just realized, a long time ago. Um, how many shirts would you use one cover sheet for? Tons, tons and tons and tons. As long as there's not ink on it, any debris or any dirt that's going to transfer, uh, if it still looks as good as new, oh, I cut mine up. <laughs> if it still looks good, it could be wrinkled. Uh, you could throw it in a drawer and pull it back out. As long as it doesn't have any ink or uh, any dirt on it that could transfer, you're A-OK -okay to keep using it. Uh, this one that I cut up has been here in the studio for well over a year now. So we've used it for a ton of different shirts. Uh, and yeah, no ink, no nothing. And it's been absolutely fine up until today. It's going to get retired. So you did well. Nice little cover sheet. Um, let's see. Um, let's see. Anthony says really likes the look of the PVC patch. Can those be applied with the 360 IQ? Absolutely. That rear heat, or the bottom heat, uh, when you're hitting the inside of the hat, Absolutely phenomenal for any patches and emblems. Uh, you can get some good applications with top heat only if you have a different cap press. Uh, but if you're looking at doing any headwear, I will promise you, uh, I would bet my pinky that a 360 IQ is really just going to alleviate so many issues. For me, the big thing with the 360 is the molded lower platen uh, that completely eliminates any creasing. If you've ever pressed hats on a traditional heat uh, cap press, you always get that high crown crease in whatever style of hat you're, you're printing on. And the 360 just completely eliminates that. For that alone, it's worth the price, hands down. And then you could get into patches and everything with that lower platen heat. Uh, and that's exactly what you want to do if you're interested in those PVC patches. But goof proof, I've done on 360 IQs. I've probably done well over multiple hundreds of uh, trucker hats, printing goof proof on them. Uh, and even Ultra Color Max, our direct to film transfer, using the 360 on foam front trucker hats. And that, like foam, when it's hot, if you look at it wrong, it deforms and dimples. So you have to be so careful with them. But with the 360 IQ, it's so quick, so easy to press those, especially with goof proof on the polyester foam. It's going on at four seconds, and you can print uh, like three, four hats a minute. It's so easy to get on there, just slap that little hold down on. Uh, but yeah, if you're thinking about doing caps in any way, the 360 is absolutely the way to go. Uh, way to go. I see Mike answered that one as well. Um, let's see. Got the A to Z. Not sure if it also comes with a kit of samples. If you purchased the A to Z press, uh, you did get an offer in there. If you didn't uh, get it already, check your email uh, for our free marketing kit, which comes with a whole bunch of display transfers, a t-shirt to get started, our idea book. So make sure you redeem that coupon if you bought that A to Z press. That's going to be your t-shirt business in a box. Uh, and I talk about that all the time on some other webinars. We actually just did a video on our YouTube channel about the benefit of the, just the idea book that really comes in that kit and the potential it, it, it could, I mean, the potential earnings it could make you as a custom apparel decorator. So really, really cool. I'm gonna keep going here because I know we're coming up on this hour and I wanna help you guys out even more. So now we're gonna talk about overcoming obstructions. Now that we, uh, we really got through the, uh, um, you know, the, the time, temperature, pressure, now we're gonna get into some more things that could get in the way of you having a, uh, the external issues, we'll say, uh, not the heat press issues. So this is based on apparel. So when you're printing hoodies, uh, polos, you're printing onesies or tote bags, you got to look out for buttons, zippers, neck seams, collars, uh, sometimes even the shoulder seams get, get a little thick and can affect your pressure. So all of these obstructions are now interfering with one of our three pieces for application, and that is our pressure. So this is the sleeper one that I told you about too. So we have to be very careful. It might apply, but the first time you wash it, maybe the second time you're getting cracking, it's peeling like, 
what happened? What's wrong with this transfer? And it's mostly because uh, even sometimes the collar, when you're loading a shirt onto the platen, you want to make sure that the collar and seams, everything is off. So you have a nice, even flat surface. Now it might be able to push that collar down a little bit and it might not be too big of an issue, but then you're also flattening it. So uh, it might look a little weird when you're trying to sell it to your customer. Just keep it off the platen. Same for like tote bags, those straps, hoodies with drawstrings or the kangaroo pocket. You want to make sure those are off. Uh, just make sure everything's off the the uh, the platen here. So uh, I could switch on over to um, our actually. I'm going to get in and talk about some different different ways to get uh, get that stuff off there. I could actually switch here in the little screen and at least show you a hoodie on here right now um, as we put a hoodie on. So let's say I'm just going to open this up and slide it right on. And here I can't go down far enough. My uh, seams here. Let me actually make this big for you guys because we could talk about all of this, making it real big. Um, and I'll come back over to the chat. But you can see right here, this uh, collar seam and the hood is on the platen. So we want to make sure that stays off. But now we have the kangaroo pocket here. And when I press this down, this one's actually going to affect our pressure. I was at an eight pressure. And now this hoodie isn't like a super thick, heavyweight hoodie. It's a lightweight hoodie. And I can't even close the press. Can't close the press now. So uh, that is because this is here. So you absolutely could see how much just this extra layer of fabric is affecting uh, the area that we have here. So uh, you want to be sure that um, that you're that you're getting nice, firm, even, flat pressure. Let's head on back over to our slides. Um, right here. And I'll show you ways that we could combat that. Now, I'm going to talk about all the different ways, and I'm going to show you all of the ways here in real time. So let's avoid all of these obstructions. I'm going to get my chat pulled back up so I can help you guys out. Um, let's see. Cynthia, you're getting ahead with, is there a rule of thumb to get your designs on a garment? Like how many inches down? You guys, you guys know what's coming next. I'm here for you. In just a couple minutes, we're going to cover that uh, right in here. So there are a few solutions for overcoming those obstructions that we were talking about on the heat press itself. Number one is interchangeable platens. Uh, the Hotronics brand, another great reason to buy a Hotronics press. One of my favorite features is the quick change mechanism to swap the platens on out. So you would easily swap them out. And I'm going to show you that here in a second. We actually have two of the platens that are in this picture right here on the left hand side, the little eight by 10 square and the six inch round bagger. So it's perfect for like tote bags, duffel bags, uh, anything that you need to isolate just one little area. We use it a bunch for uh, backpacks to, to decorate on backpacks. It makes it super, super easy. Um, of course, that's just isolating the area. The second here is mouse pads, just regular mouse pads. We sell these at transferexpress.com, they're three bucks. So you could, uh, you could just cut them up. Say you're just doing like a little left chest and you just really need to raise the print area this tiny little bit. Uh, you could actually just take your scissors and cut right into it. And with it being three bucks, it's not like you're wasting a whole bunch of expensive stuff. Now, this is different than heat printing pillows because I'm, I'm anticipating somebody to ask about heat printing pillows here. Um, and so this is firm. This is gonna keep that medium to firm pressure. With a heat printing pillow, you're going to be softening a lot of that pressure and you're not going to be getting the medium to firm pressure that you need. So like for vinyl or any application where you just need light pressure, a heat printing pillow is fine because what it's going to do is allow those areas where that hoodie seam was doubled up or maybe the uh, the collar with the drawstrings, it's going to allow that to sink down and it's not going to affect your pressure. However, with this, now you're raising the print area and having everything else fall down. So this is where you're printing. So <clears throat> this is squishy and hard. It's squishy, but it's still hard. <clears throat> Excuse me. Uh, but this is the way to go. for any of those applications. Now, another thing that we have here too that I wanna talk about is print perfect pads. Now, perfect pads are essentially the same exact stuff. Uh, if I just switch over to my other camera here, it's essentially the same exact material that's on the bottom of your heat press. So it's like a foam rubber, right? But if you look at the, uh, if you look at, oops, let's get that back down. Uh, if you look at the actual open cell, like neoprene foam or whatever that the mouse pads made out of it's very very similar now the print perfect pads are about double the thickness of of a uh, mouse pad so they really raise the printing area uh especially really handy for like onesies where you have those plastic snaps uh that close the onesie up 
that will melt under the heat press. Sometimes this isn't far enough away uh, height wise, and so you'll still melt those buttons. Something like a Print Perfect pad is great for that. However, these are pretty pricey. I think they start at about 40 bucks uh, because they are essentially replacement pads for the bottom of the heat press. Um, and that makes them expensive for when you just need a little size. Now you could buy them in a whole bunch of different sizes, but if you buy a big one and you need just a little one to go inside, say a pocket, and I need to cut this up, it hurts. It hurts to cut them up because they are so expensive. So that's where the mouse pads really come in. Uh, and I've used a few Print Perfect pads, but in all of the applications, uh, I could actually have no problem with just a mouse pad. Now, uh, these are the platens that I was talking about. So the interchangeable platens, the round bagger um, and the eight by 10. And I wanna show you just how easy those actually fit here into the heat press. I do wanna watch. Um, can you use multiple mouse pads? Brenda, absolutely, you could use multiple mouse pads. And I'm here to help you out, not sell mouse pads. Um, which we have them on TransferExpress.com. So if you want to pick one up uh, and you're ordering goof proof, just add one to your order. We'll throw one in the box with your transfer order. Uh, so it's just $3. You don't have to pay shipping on it or anything. It's included with the shipping of your order anyway. So an easy way to get them. But you could also go to Amazon, get the blank ones. Don't get the dyed ones. Uh, get the one. These are made for sublimation. So this is a polyester face, uh, which will not transfer anything to your apparel. Sometimes if you get the colored ones, they have actually been sublimated. So when you hit them with heat again, some of that dye releases and it can stain your garments. So always, always, always plain white, plain white, which we have in stock always here at Transfer Express. Yes, we hoard mouse pads. We love them so much. Every single one of us here uses them almost daily whenever we're printing little, little weird stuff. And we even have these interchangeable platens too. Um, Steve, yes, if you have time, temperature, pressure right on a dry fit shirt, shouldn't see the impression of the platen on the shirt. Yes, uh, if everything is set correctly. Uh, we do have a great video on avoiding scorch marks on polyester because certain brands, uh, you just have to worry about the heat. Uh, and we have a great guide to actually testing uh, the, the actual uh, heat sensitivity of the fabric. I will tell you, from my experience, black Nike Peak polos will scorch every single time. I've went down to like 220 degrees and they still scorch. So sometimes it all comes down to the specific brand and manufacturer. Sport Tech, uh, some of their jerseys, you could take to 380 degrees, 100% polyester, not an issue. Some of those like uh, moisture wicking polos, you look at them wrong and they scorch. So uh, it all comes down to specifically the different colorway. It is way more noticeable on heavily dyed polyester than lighter dyes. So if you're doing like a Carolina blue or white or a natural, maybe even like a light gray, you're not gonna notice the scorching as much as you are when that saturated pigment dye in the fabric itself starts to actually burn those fibers. Uh, so you get that like sheen. Now, we also have figured out the only way that's ever worked in the 20 years of us trying to figure out how to salvage scorched polyester. Uh, we found one way to mask it, uh, using a small cricket iron. Uh, funny enough, we have that video on our YouTube as well. So there are things to look out for. Always watch your heat. But that's going to be choosing the right transfer type for that application on that. You're going to look for something with a super, super low application temperature that's going to be able to meet that minimum. For 90% of polyester, anything under 300 degrees is going to be okay. And you're not going to be scorching. But of course, always test before you do that. So any of the Ultra Color line, even Ultra Color Max, uh, Elasta prints, if you want that screen printed option. I just did a 100% polyester jersey earlier this week with Elasta prints, absolutely no scorching, no heat sensitivity, couldn't tell that it wasn't screen printed. So uh, it all comes down to the specific garment that you have and just test it. Flip the inside uh, bottom, like the just one of the hem lines, flip it up and just test, press it and start low 200 degrees until you get up to whatever application temperature that your transfer type is going to apply at and you'll see if it starts scorching beforehand. And then you're not ruining the garment with a big box <clears throat> uh, where your platen was, but you're just getting a little tiny inside corner or something so that you could still use the garment once you figure out what temperature it's safe to heat press it at. Uh, so that's a nice little tangent there. But <laughs> um, I do want to uh, jump in and show you how to use these things just going in. And then we'll get into some positioning and placement tips, okay? I promise you, we're coming up, we're coming up to it. Um, let's go over here. I'm going to go full screen. Perfect, perfect, perfect. And we're going to go on over to our heat press here. So at our heat press, 
here is our uh, number one, our platen. So I took my hoodie off that we had on before. Our hoodie's right here. It's still here, still here with us. But the one thing I love, love, love about all of the Hotronic Press's quick change platens. So there's just a little lever right down here on the side. You lift the platen up and it pops right out. So I'm just gonna go ahead and replace this with this little eight by 10 that we have here. And so when you're printing, say on that hoodie, boom. I've got that locked in. How quick was that? How quick was that to change in there and just slide that in? Now, say I'm just doing this front left chest or this front center chest print and it's 10 inches wide. Bam, right there. I have now completely isolated my printing area. I will have to readjust my pressure because the thickness is a little bit different. I'm down at a three, but that's simple and easy. I'm just going to kick that back up. I'm up to a six now on the pressure there. So super easy, so super simple, and now we're ready to go. And that's it. That's how we would print that one. Now, if we're going to do the same thing here, pop this one right out, and I'll grab this, round, drop it right in, lock it back in, we could do the same thing. So super simple, so, they call it quick change for a reason. It's quick, just like our Easy View Online Designer. Call it Easy View for a reason, it's easy. Quick change means quick. Now we'll drop that platen back in, go for the full size one. Now, of course, they make 15 by 15, 11 by 15. Uh, the tag along platen where you could do the front and the tag at the same time, really, really great full featured stuff. I absolutely love them. Uh, and I would buy the, the quick change just for that platen alone. Uh, so very, very important. So, uh, but I wanna show you now the mouse pads. So how we're gonna raise the mouse pad printing area. So what we're gonna do, is pop it right up on here. I saw somebody in the comments too mentioning that they couldn't, uh, they can't get it, or uh, they can't get everything right upside down when you're looking at everything uh, like printing upside down here. Uh, I'm used to it, and I, I take that for granted because uh, I've I'm used to screen printing presses, and those screen printing presses, uh, everything's upside down. Uh, so you're loading upside down. Now, even that even gets complicated when you have like a uh, the goof proof transfers where they're a solid paper backing. Uh, so when you go to put the solid paper backing down, now you can't see through it and the transfer is reversed. So now you're reversed and upside down. I promise you, I absolutely promise you, it gets easier. Just try it a few times and, and you'll absolutely get it. So you just, practice makes perfect uh, for sure here. So just like this, if you could see this now, um, I don't know how much you could see, uh, but here, if we needed to reduce that print area to raise up this, now we're here and I really can't close the press. So I'm gonna to have to back the pressure off a ton and I still can't. So that's how high we're raising the print area here. Let's see, nope, not now. I'm going as high as I can. But there we go. Now we're down, we're at eight. So we're a little high with just that mouse pad in there. Um, but that's going to be the printing area that then we could print on. Now the print perfect pads of course get bigger. You can put them in sleeves, which are really, really helpful. Because that's one thing too, even when you're printing uh, the sleeves, like on a short sleeve shirt, you're gonna have a seam, I could show you here on the hoodie, but you're going to have this seam on the bottom. So you always have to make sure that this seam is out of the way when you're printing, say on like the top side of the sleeve. And that's what mouse pads are great for. Because then if this seam is underneath here, so let's just say we wanna print flat, and we're gonna hold it right over, you can see, of course, now my pressure is way, way backed off. I'm just trying to prove a point here. <laughs> but when you press this down, you're going to see that right in the middle, and there's going to be a real bad seam, yep, right here. And that's going to affect the actual pressure uh, of the transfer. And you're going to see that, tr that line come through your transfer, absolutely guaranteed. Avoid it, avoid it, avoid it. Bye. Just grabbing a piece of this mouse pad, we'd cut it up to fit it in, we'd slide it in the sleeve itself, and we're all set. There's also a trick to doing sleeves. Uh, you'll have to watch the YouTube for that one uh, <laughs> to get that one uh, all set in there. It's really easy. You could just lay it down and you're getting close to that seam, uh, but you're not actually going on the seam itself. Uh, and, and you can't tell, can't tell the difference between them here. I'm gonna go back to the chat, make sure that we could see everything here. Um, yeah, piece of masking tape on the garment and remove it before pressing. Oh, that's a that's something that you could that's something you could get into. Uh, messed up two pieces last week because of that. Uh, 
a hat platen for that press. There is not a hat hat platen for these presses. Um, we've seen some people do it with like keeping the bill like off the edge. So they'll put like the, the hat here, the bill sticks up here, but it's, it's a lot of hassle. You have to actually build little areas up for it. So I really, really wouldn't recommend it. If you're gonna be doing hats, the best way is gonna be doing a cap press. Um, let's see. Do, 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 do. Arena mind blown. Hopefully we helped you out. <laughs> uh, those platens aren't like, no, Steven muscles, second flex. You put me on camera and that's the second flex already. <laughs> um, transfer for using mugs, depending on your mugs. I've seen sublimation mugs work out really, really good. Uh, at Transfer Express, we actually have full color decals. So they're essentially like super, super durable stickers that are dishwasher safe. And we've put those on mugs uh, and they work great. So they're really, really cool to do. Um, I just want to make sure we're getting all of our, all of our chats here. Perfect. Perfect. Cora, I'm so happy to help. That's exactly what this stuff is for. Now we're going to help even more because we're going into positioning tips. So these are, of course, not just time, temperature, pressure, avoiding obstructions, but the dreaded belly print, like I was talking about earlier or getting that placement off, that is not a good application because you're not in the right spot. So here, three fingers down. This is my rule of, not thumb, my rule of fingers. Uh, and this is something that I picked up working for other commercial print shops uh, more than a decade ago. This is the industry standard for almost any single design. Now, of course, this is going to vary. I, man, I wish I was wearing a t-shirt today. I'm gonna button my top button uh, and not hit the microphone and just kind of show you with a piece of paper. Now, this is a great way too, if you're worried about uh, image sizing, I'm gonna stand up here. We're gonna see if Heather behind the scenes, man in the camera could, uh, could follow me up here. So um, this is a great way for sizing. So we know that a piece of paper is eight and a half by 11 inches. So this fits, this is a good solid full front shirt. We usually recommend 11 inches because you can see that is the majority of me on the front. I wear a size extra large shirt, but you can see 11 inches is almost, there's just a little bit on each side. So 11 inches is a great size. So you're going to hold this up. Let's see if it's down from the collar. Oh, yep. About three inches, right where I'm holding it, or three fingers, which is about an inch and a half to three inches, depending on how big your fingers are. I have some pretty big fingers, but Three fingers right there is going to put your left chest exactly, whoops, sorry, I'm, I'm hitting the mic. Uh, I said I wasn't gonna do it, and here I did it anyway. Uh, but this left chest, or this, this center chest, sorry, is going to be about three fingers down from that collar area, putting it right across my chest. Now, say any lower, and it's starting to become a belly print, and it's really kind of getting down there. So we wanna make sure that it's right there, right where it needs to be. For a hockey jersey, is gonna be the same. Uh, depending on if there's any seams, sometimes you get the like the seam where like the shoulders are a different area and then there's a seam right here in the middle. Uh, so, uh, yes, then you're going to have to uh, you're definitely going to have to compensate for that. Or alternatively, I'm sorry, Heather, I'm, I'm making you <laughs> making you work me on the camera uh, is if it's vertical. So if it's vertical now and we're doing three fingers now, this is pushing this a little low. So it's kind of gonna sit a little bit lower than we anticipated it being. So this is where we're actually gonna come up and not be there. We have a whole bunch of different ways to do it um, from the three finger rule to checking the armpit seams and going with the armpit seams across and making an X, which you could kind of see me do right there in the thumbnail for the YouTube video. If you go over to transferexpress.com, uh, print perfect, you could search on our channel or just if you're at the Transfer Express uh, YouTube homepage, click that is like the first video up uh, in that first little strip of playlists is print perfect print placement. And I, it's a 20 minute video, 19 minutes. And I go through literally every single way that you could align a shirt on a, uh, on, or you could align a graphic on a shirt. Before I get off this slide though, and talk about other methods, V next, Pamela, same thing, depending on the deepness of the V. I usually go about a half inch or one finger down from the collar on almost any graphic because especially on women's v-neck shirts they get very very low and anything else is going to be a belly print and you don't want that a lot of times you'll see for those really really deep v's the big graphics go on the back and they get a left chest print that is even above where the bottom of the v comes down so it all depends on the specific uh, size there is no set rule for that uh, the best thing is uh, put it on somebody just like I was doing. So say our graphic is gonna be a left chest, right? I'm gonna say this is, I, I, we're gonna say 
we're going to say that I measured this and cut this up, that it's three and a half inches by two inches, right? So like a business card size, the best way to do it, go look in the mirror, just hold it up to yourself, wearing a t-shirt, measuring it up wherever you need it to be. And then there you go. You're all set and you know exactly where it's going to be. Have your sister, your friend, your brother, your coworker, anybody stand there and you hold it up on them. And then you can even measure. So when you have it laying flat, when you have your garment laying flat on the heat press, that you're able to actually measure how far down it is and how far over. But the easiest way to, to do that left chest is going to be aligning to the collar. Man, I really wish, could we, could we show one of these shirts back here? Here, let me, go, uh, let me go full screen so we could see these shirts here. And I could show you. Because yeah, this is built to help you guys out. I want to help you guys out. So let's look uh, here. Made in the USA. We could look at this one. Oh man, this is going to work out great. We should do this more often. Are you guys liking this format? A little bit different than just a static format, but I just want to make sure we're helping you guys out because I know we help people with the slides, but I want to help you with the real life instruction too. All of these great examples right there. So this shirt is a great example of exactly three. I think I printed this one. That's why it matches <laughs> my exact fingers uh, coming down on the collar. So also too, one thing to keep in mind is this is, this is typically covered. So if we are printing this shirt, this is the transfer paper. But I could peel the transfer paper back a quite a little ways before I start seeing the print, right? So you want to make sure that you're not going to the top of the transfer carrier. Or if you're doing the transfer carrier, you're cutting it out of your gang sheet as close as you can. So it's right there and you could go, oh, there's three inches. Everything's all set, ready to go. Or you could usually just peel it back, look until the transfer is there. And then you know exactly where it's going to be. And then you say, oh, it's just one finger down from the collar when you're doing your printing, making it super simple. So it's all going to vary on, on your transfer type. This is just a slide with my notes on it. So not an actual, not an actual transfer. Uh, but let's see here. So um, here, this is a great example, a little, little fuzzies. Let's get these fuzzies off. But we'll show you this one. With how vertical, this is a nice tone-on-tone -tone shirt for an arts festival, but with how vertical this graphic is, if we would go three fingers down from collar, it would be starting right here. So it would be starting very, very low. So this is where I compensated for this placement by centering it here at the bottom of the armpit, going all the way over, and drawing a line straight down. So where these lines intersect is going to be the center of our graphic. Now that's going to place it, yes, less than three fingers, but you're still right where you need to be. And if I put this shirt on, I don't wear a medium, but if I put this shirt on, you'd see, ah, I hit the mic again. I'm sorry, guys. But if I put this shirt on, collar's right there. Imagine it on me. It doesn't look too low and it doesn't look too high. You could always err on the higher side than the lower side, just like a left chest print. This is a great way to look it up, uh, especially when this is laying flat on your press right here where your uh, top seam is. For the shoulder, you can kind of see it better on the back side here. Take that, go straight down the garment, and go about four fingers down. So right here is going to be where your left chest placement is. This one, just like you could, you could be a little bit higher than lower. Uh, it's going to look better a little bit higher than lower. Um, and then always be uh, kind of defer the center line of your transfer a little bit closer to the middle than the armpit, because it's uh, left chest print a little bit closer to the middle is okay. Uh, left chest print over towards this seam is in the armpit and you're not even going to see it. So there's kind of those rules of thumb. But yes, if you go, I have all of this on YouTube videos that you could go and watch on your own time uh, and be able to get those that all that training and education on demand. Uh, if you're not already subscribed to our YouTube channel, you should. If you're a heat press, uh, heat press decorator in any way, shape or form or even running any T-shirt business, I put out tons of marketing help. Uh, even this week, we just did some uh, some weirder placements or, or some weirder, weirder products. So shorts, sweatpants, and blankets. And so we used heat transfers on those. We talk about what transfer to use, what to look for in the materials when you're selecting blanks, where to even get your blanks from. So, so much more than just heat transfers. Uh, we're here to help you and your business out. And let's go down here. I'm going to hang that one back up. And we're going to get to some other positioning methods uh, and, and talk about some stuff. So let me start these slides back up. And I'll pull the chat back up to make sure I haven't missed anything in there. And I hope you guys are still hanging with me. We're just a little bit over an hour. We're going to be wrapping it up here real soon. Uh, STX20, that is the autoclam. That's exactly the Hotronics that we have here. Um, 
Do the placements change according to garment size? A little bit, but for the most part, not really. A sport, uh, on like smalls and youths, yeah, absolutely. You're not going to want to be three fingers down. Go to two, one finger down for smalls and youths. Uh, but for most adult sizes from small to, uh, you know, two XL, you're going to have the same placement and the same size everywhere. The one thing I want to point out before we switch this slide is that crease line in the transfer. The easiest way, hold it up to the light, match edge of the transfer to edge of the transfer. You can see through that, that opaque carrier and match those up and be able to do that there. Here we have the application ruler. So another easy, super easy way when you're just getting started. I have one right here as part of our application kit. And just like that. Now, the fun thing to look for, if you're looking at me down in the corner, look at that. The application ruler is my three fingers. That was not planned. It's just apparently my fingers are apparel decorating fingers. Uh, <laughs> and three fingers matches that one and a half to three inches for the bottom of the collar. Now this aligns you right up. It fits right on the collar shape. You could see in that photo, it has a line for left chest, has a line for right chest, and it has a line for a line right here in the center. And that's where you could, met, you could line up that crease. Or if you're looking at the transfer, the carriers are goof proof, elastic prints and uh, hot split retro come on that gridded paper. So you're able to get that there uh, and know exactly where that center line is. So one of these is included in our application kit. And I want to tell you how you could pick up one of these today uh, for a super, super cool deal uh, that's not available there too much. So also you have to remove this before pressing. Remove your fingers when you're when you're measuring. Make sure you remove your fingers and you remove uh, your uh, application ruler before pressing. Otherwise, it may stick to your upper platen. This is plastic. So... It's flexible plastic, but it's plastic all the same. So uh, that's one way to do it. Now, also, if you want to get a little bit higher end, we see this for commercial decorators uh, who are bringing in a lot of people who are new to heat pressing and or doing humongous runs with sportswear and jerseys and stuff that is very uh, placement uh, sensitive. As you'll see these laser alignment systems on the Hotronics Dual Air Fusion Heat Press, it actually comes with two of them set up for each platen, which is where uh, this police video, the or the, the video that that police screenshot came from, is actually that placement and positioning uh, thing. So I go through a lot of this and some extra expanded tips as well. But you could buy a standalone version to sit next to any press. It does require a little bit more space, so you're going to need to make sure it has uh, it needs to have at least, I think, 18 inches of space by your press to be able to accurately uh, project those lasers. Now, it does require the shirt to be loaded on every single time the same exact way. So those, those lasers will not move, and they're going to show you the baseline and the center line for super easy placement. Because there's four of them, you could even line them up so it boxes in exactly the size of the transfer which is for just easy placement. But if you're not loading that T-shirt on straight the same exact way every single time, then the placement is still going to vary regardless of how straight or how accurate your lines are. Always something to keep in line. That's why I always kind of recommend it as a little bit more of a advanced decoration technique. Um, let's keep going here. I know your time is important. Time is money in the apparel decorating industry, and I'm so grateful for you guys hanging out here. And I'm just wowed by your passion uh, to better yourself and your business here on just a Thursday afternoon in August. And I love hanging out with you guys uh, in here. Let's see. Um, yeah, the laser alignment tool uh, is a little bit difficult to set up. You just need to lock it in uh, and be careful of the set screws because you, if you put a lot of torque on them, they will strip. Uh, so uh, delicate is the way to go, especially with any electronics I've found. Um, but definitely want to make sure that that you're getting it set and then not knocking into it. Uh, like if you're knocking into it or you're elbowing it and things get out of place, uh, the lasers work for some people. I've never needed to use them. Uh, we did have lasers aligned at one of the print shops that I worked at on an automatic press that we were doing jerseys, uh, like name plates on the jerseys so that we could hit that same location every single time. But it wasn't so much for lining up the print because the screens were already aligned. It was for lining up the garment on the platen. So that's something too, that like if you if you know exactly where a seam is going to be on a garment, you could use it to do that as well. So now let's talk about things not to use. One of the things not to use is a cover sheet, unless it's noted on the transfer paperwork, but the majority of transfers do not need them. Teflon cover sheets, silicone, those big silicone pads that are made to stop scorching and polyester, they block heat. That's why it's stopping scorching. So whenever you introduce anything between the heating element of your press and the transfer itself, you are blocking heat. Now you either need to compensate for that by raising your temperature, 
which is effectively then if you're worried about scorching polyester, now you're introducing more heat and that's it. That's counterproductive to what you're trying to do. Uh, so you just want to make sure you're using the transfer type that could meet the, the application temperature of that fabric. So it's not going to ruin it. Uh, no Teflon cover sheets, no silicone pads, no silicone cover sheets, and no paper cover sheets unless noted. Like I was talking about a little bit earlier, these paper cover sheets uh, reduce the temperature by, by, by about 10 degrees um, at worst case scenario. The testing that we did with the silicone cover sheet, it blocks up to 30 degrees of heat. So when you're talking about the difference of something having a fuse point like goof proof applying at 365 degrees, now you're applying it at 335 degrees which for four seconds at that higher application works fine. But at four seconds at that lower application, it's just not getting the heat it needs for a proper application. It may apply fine at first, but a couple washes, it's gonna start cracking and deteriorating. You don't want that to happen because 90% of the time, when those couple washes uh, go through the, when that shirt goes through the wash for that second time, it's in your customer's hands and it's far out of your control. And you're lucky if they even contact you back to go, hey, so this print's cracking, what happened? Could I get this replaced? Most of the time they walk away and they will never contact you again. So make sure that you are do, uh, applying and following all of these application techniques. Now, one thing I do recommend as part of like our application kit, it actually comes with a t-shirt and a transfer that you could try yourself. So you could dial in all of these application settings. Not only does it come with the heat press test strips and this application ruler, but it comes with a transfer. So you could dial in all of your heat press, your time, temperature, and pressure, and be able to print a shirt and then wash test it and wash test it and wash test it and ensure that you are confident in the quality of the shirts that you're giving your customer. So really, really, uh, this entire kit here, uh, there's more in the kit too that I haven't even got into. It's only 35 bucks. So a uh, really, really cool thing. So let's continue rolling here. Upper platen covers. We see them all the time. And yeah, it's great. You want to be sure uh, that you're not, uh, you know, ruining your brand new shiny investment of a heat press. Want to keep it looking great. Uh, I love the lower platen covers. So this quick slip pad protector that we see here that I took off a little bit earlier. Love these because they protect this lower platen. But the upper platen cover, just like I was talking about earlier too, they have a non-stick coating on them, just like what this IR thermometer uh, has a hard time reflecting light back on. They're super easy to wipe off and keep clean. They don't scratch. They're perfectly fine. Um, no issues whatsoever uh, when, you're, when you're actually printing stuff on them. And I've even this press itself, you could see, uh, I, could, I don't have any light to shine up on it, but there's been plenty of times that this has gotten an applied transfer applied directly to the heating element and all you do is take a t-shirt, wipe the t-shirt right on the upper platen while it's still hot, just like this. And that will wipe that ink right off. Really super easy uh, to keep clean. There's really no reason to have that cover sheet on there unless you're printing something that always needs a cover sheet. And then you could, you could keep the cover sheet on there, but you don't necessarily... <clears throat> You don't necessarily need that on there. And just like anything in between the heating element and your transfer, it's blocking heat. All right, pillows. Now, this is another thing we see, we see all the time. I had all these here to show you guys too. So uh, one thing when we're talking about mouse pads, print perfect pads, or even the smaller platens <clears throat> is pillows. Now, these are soft, squishy pillows, and they are going to reduce the actual pressure that you're giving out, like I talked about earlier where it's going to compress, and then you're not going to have a firm pressure that you need. <coughs> Excuse me, all this talking. I hope it's helping out. Yes, Stephen, yes. Stay to the end. Yes, last set of information, crucial. Yes, we had to get through, get through the basics first, but we want to help you guys out. So happy that you're still hanging out with us. This is the application kit that I've been talking about. It has everything that we've kind of been talking about this entire uh, webinar here. So, I'll go through everything in the contents and show you what's inside one right here. You get this shirt. Uh, this is a Port & Company core cotton shirt, so a PC54, a great, super affordable option that I absolutely love. Comes with a goof-proof screen printed transfer, so after you get your time, temperature, pressure all set, you could actually test your press and dial in that setting. Here are those heat press test strips that I was talking about. Um, you get the application ruler, of course. You get a pack of cover sheets that's down here at the bottom. <clears throat> pack of cover sheets that's down at the bottom. So this is a 10 pack of just paper cover sheets. Great for when you are, need to test the pressure of your press. 
cut them up into the dollar bill shapes or anything like that, or cover those pre-existing decorations that we were talking about. Here's a little guide. So like the picture that you see right there, um, you get a $10 off coupon for your next order at Transfer Express. So now it's only a $25 kit. Um, you get an application poster. Remember how I was saying that uh, memorizing all the time, temperature, and pressure, all of those, uh, all of those fancy settings that I memorize because I do this every single day? Right here. And then you even have your hot peel, your cold peel, whatever it needs to be, your temperature, time, pressure, peel, and your transfer type. Everything from Transfer Express all on one poster. Really handy to have right next to your heat press. We have one actually on the other wall where we always have our heat press um, over there. And then, of course, you get a mouse pad, all included. So this is a super value-packed kit. If you bought all this stuff separate, it's far more than 25 bucks. And I say 25 because it's got that $10 off coupon in there. So one thing today, uh, I got in trouble last time I did this, so I'm hoping they have forgiveness uh, for me because I just want to help you guys out, uh, that I'm going to go in and manually remove shipping for any orders for an application kit coming through before the end of day today. Uh, so they will all ship out tomorrow, but before they ship, because at Transfer Express, you're, you're, ne you're never paying for your order until it ships. So your card's not actually charged. So when you go to checkout, you're going to see shipping, the shipping charge on your order. And I promise you that if you order today by the end of day, I'm going to go in there personally and remove the shipping charge. So these will ship free. $35 to your door, no $15 flat rate. They're going to come in a big box like this. So they're like the size of a pizza box. So they're not cheap, but this ensures everything makes it to you in one piece. It doesn't collapse, doesn't crush, uh, and you're able to get this application kit in good hands. These, these boxes also store great for transfers. Uh, you can keep them around in your shop, uh, but I want to help you guys out. We talked about application and how to really improve the entire process. Uh, for you guys just getting started, this kit is super nice to have on hand. Those heat press test strips by themselves, if you just buy the pack from Transfer Express, I think they're like 20 or 25 bucks. So being able to get them here in the application kit, Mike threw a link down there right in the, uh, right in the chat. And you guys just need to make sure uh, that, that you just order it by the, by the end of day today because that'll be the cutoff uh, before everything ships out tomorrow. Uh, and we're, we're picking and packaging all of the orders uh, that we, I uh, just go in there and manually, I'm going to manually remove the shipping. So you'll only be charged 35 bucks. You will see it at checkout for today, uh, but your card will not be charged. You could hold me to it. I'll pinky swear, or I'll bet my, my pinky what I was betting uh, what, Tim earlier, or <laughs> whatever I was saying. <laughs> uh, I will bet my pinky that I'm going to go in there and remove all that stuff for you so that uh, you will not be charged shipping. I just want to help you guys out. Uh, and last time I did this rogue, uh, they yelled at me. So I'm going to do it again because it helped people out and people reached out and said, man, I realized my, like earlier we saw in the chat, like I realized my press was 30 degrees too high. I realized my press was 30 degrees too low. And for just $35, that's the price of this thing, 25, 30 bucks after shipping. Uh, that's the price of one of these things. And you have those heat press test strips. Uh, those aren't reusable. So they are a one-time use, but you're getting a whole bunch in there where you're going to be able to test your press multiple times. You're going to be able to test the pressure of your press if you don't have uh, that digital readout on a Hotronics press. Uh, and then the mouse pad for raising the print area. You're not have to buy. You don't have to buy any expensive platens, even if your press can't switch them out. Because I mean, yes, these are great. These are awesome. But I think this platen alone is like 140 bucks. So it's a little pricey. Just a little pricey. Uh, great if you need to use it all the time. But for like a one-time use, man. The mouse pad is going to work perfectly fine to print a run of 12 shirts, 24 shirts, 48 shirts. Uh, instead of throwing your profit away, buying one of these. Now, if you're doing it hoodies all the time and you're doing 200, yeah, this thing's going to pay for itself in the time saved alone of having to stuff it in a shirt. But this one's here. But uh, yes, absolutely. I want to give that give that offer for you guys today for just hanging out in the webinar. It is uh, it's so super cool to be here with you guys. Uh, I'm I hope we answered your questions here. Um, Let's see here. Tim says, yeah, got one last time. Awesome value. Uh, and yeah, they did. I had, a, I had a talking to about that one. So we'll see if a talking to is coming to me again uh, for letting you guys get this awesome deal uh, with, with the removing the free shipping. But I have the power to do it. I'll go into the system and pull it out. Uh, and then they can't charge you. They could charge me. They'll take it out of my paycheck. <laughs> but I want to do that for you guys. That's how much I care about you guys just having a great time. Like, have a, regardless if you're using Transfer Express transfers or you're cutting your own vinyl or you're doing sublimation, Anything you're decorating with a heat press, you just need to make sure that your time, temperature, and pressure are always set to what they need to be for your application, and you're going to have a great time. I love the printing industry. Uh, I've been in it for a very long time, uh, and I love being here, being able to empower you guys and help you out 
uh, in your own t-shirt decorating journey. I love hearing you guys, uh, the stories, the challenges, the successes when I meet you at trade shows. So please come out Impressions Fort Worth or uh, out in Long Beach. Hopefully I'll be out there at the next impression show uh, in January next year. And then of course, uh, GPX Expos, the everything embroidery, uh, tons of conferences out there. So uh, before we wrap this up, I wanna make sure that there's any last questions in here. Keith, uh, always, always happy to see you here. Thank you so much. I'm glad I could be helpful for you. Um, and so if you guys have any last minute questions, go ahead and leave them right here in the chat section uh, and we'll, or we'll answer them right now. Or if there's anything we didn't get to, uh, we can even follow up via email to make sure that we're answering your questions. Guys, we are here to help you and your business out. And I say that all the time and we're not joking about it. We're not, I'm not lying that we are dedicated to you uh, and making sure that you have the most success that you want with your t-shirt business. Uh, we're always available, info at transferexpress.com. That's for any ordering questions. What transfer should I use? There's a transfer selector tool uh, online. There's a chat online that we're always available to help you out. But any question, no big, how, no, no matter how big or small, you could hit us up, info at transferexpress.com. We'll love to help you out. You could call us Monday through Friday, 8 a.m. to 6 p.m. That's 1-800-622-2280. Of course, we have our blog, blog.transferexpress.com, where we are posting stuff all the time. Man, blogs might be dead in the sense of anything on there, but when it's 3 o'clock in the morning and you're wondering how to print on a split front baseball jersey, you're going to be really glad that that blog post is there and you found it. <laughs> I will say I've been in that exact predicament uh, and freaking out about something that's due last minute. And man, how do I do this? And I find an article on a blog <laughs> or the Transfer Express blog. Absolutely awesome to be able to help you guys out. Um, let's see what else. Uh, the videos, previous webinars, all on transferexpress.com or over on YouTube. Just search Transfer Express on YouTube. You'll find our channel. Uh, there's a Stalls channel over there too, Stalls TV, if you're interested in those PVC patches that we heard people talking about on here. Uh, of course, visit us at those trade shows that I've been mentioning. That Heat Press Pro Day is a super limited engagement uh, and the first real dedicated, exclusive kind of online or in-person class we're doing since COVID really hit. So uh, it's gonna be a half day from two to 6.30, includes a happy hour, meet and greet, make and take hands-on demos and everything over at the Maid Lab. That's Fort Worth, Texas on September 29th. I am going to be there um, and you could find that on the events page as well. Um, uh, Pat wants to order the kit plus some transfers. Just put it all in your cart, put the uh, kit in your cart and then also order your transfers, put them in the cart and check out at the same time. Uh, and I'll still be able to see that kit. So I'll grab the, uh, I don't know if we'll be able to take free shipping off the transfers as well, uh, but we might be able to prorate that. I'm gonna have to check and see what I could do in the system. I know I could remove it from just one item. I don't know about two. So we'll see what we could do with that one uh, on that one, Pat. Uh, Long Beach is in January arena. Yes, um, that one, uh, I think it's January 22nd. Don't quote me on that. They announced the dates or at least they like save the date. Uh, and that's in Long Beach, California, just south of LA at the Long Beach uh, Exposition Center. So our convention center, whatever they end up calling it. That's usually the kickoff for the year, one of the premier events. Uh, and hopefully last year kind of got uh, stunted a little bit in its size because uh, COVID was kind of exploding during that time right in LA County. Things have calmed down this year and we're going to hope that this winter plays out well. Uh, and that it goes back to this huge full size show. We all get to hang out as an industry, talk about what's coming next, talk about the trends uh, and really get on it. I love the guys over at Ink Kitchen, the whole shop talk series that they do. Uh, we do have in-person uh, conferences as well. I'll be teaching one during the Impressions Fort Worth uh, show coming up in just a month on placement and positioning. So very similar to stuff that we talked about today, just all in person uh, and be able to answer your questions there too. Um, Yes, convention, convention center, yes. Um, were transfers sitting in any direct sunlight for some time? Had some issue earlier, had to reorder. Um, yes, uh, Dennis or Emily, whoever's asking that one, yes. Um, absolutely, you wanna keep them out of direct sunlight. You wanna keep them in a stable climate controlled environment. Uh, any kind of changes in temperature or heat or humidity or sitting in direct sunlight could ruin the adhesive on them. Uh, we have a video on our YouTube channel where we applied a 10 year old transfer and it applied fine. It was only held in a filing cabinet in a climate controlled office for 10 years. So it wasn't sitting in a car or in a window or in a garage where the temperature changed a lot. Uh, so it was nice and stable, air conditioned, heated in the winter uh, and applied first time, no problem, exact instructions. 
uh, to what you're doing. If you do have a transfer that might be sketch on the application, you can always increase the dwell time. So increase your press time, uh, sometimes by doubling it. So if it's goof proof, uh, six seconds, maybe bump it up to 10 to 12 seconds, uh, but then wash test it. Don't be running runs for your customers. You could wash test that uh, to ensure that you're not over curing the inks because then you might be prone to cracking as well. And of course, worst case scenario, you're just reordering the transfers. Um, let's see. Ba, ba, ba. Joanna, yes, the STX20 is the Hotronics Auto Clam Press. Boom, right here. Um, and so uh, that, that Hotronics Auto Clam Press is absolutely uh, the STX20. If you have it past 2014, uh, super easy to, to change those platens, has the quick change platen. Um, of course, if, uh, if it is older than 2014, you could still get the attachments made, I believe. You just have to contact Hotronics and they have to custom make one for you. Um, but the quick change, anything was over, yeah, what is that now? Uh, eight years old. Uh, anything less than eight years old is going to be able to use all of these quick change platens. Absolutely no, no problem. All you have to look for is if your platen has this little pin because that's the quick change pin, drops right in there, uh, and you see that little nub on there. It's older, okay. Um, yeah, you, if you want one of the interchangeable platens, I believe Hotronics will make one for you. Just contact them directly, tell them your exact model, give them your serial number so they could double check that stuff, uh, and then they'll ensure that it will fit on your press and you can do that. I believe they're still doing that. Um, absolutely, Brandon, thank you for joining us. Always happy to help. Um, let's see, Ultra Color Max, do you recommend using a bottom heated platen when pressing it onto 100% poly or a performance material? Nope, nope, nope. 90% of the time that, I mean, I've yet to really put it on any super heat sensitive. I have put it on 100% polyester hats, uh, hoodies, and uh, polos, and I have not had any issues at 290 degrees. If it is really a performance wicking or performance moisture wicking, you may be able to get down to 270 degrees if it's super heat sensitive. Uh, because I know that adhesive is a low temp melt adhesive, but 290 is the sweet spot where it's going to apply just right. Uh, test at 290 and you shouldn't have any problems at all. You're not going to need a power platen or anything like that to help equalize that heat. Uh, if you're using a mouse pad to raise the printing area, say on like a polo, just make sure you're compensating the pressure accordingly. Uh, and Ultra Color Max luckily is a medium uh, pressure transfer. So you don't really need to be putting that firm pressure. You could back it off uh, to say, depending on how big you're cutting your, your piece here, you could back it off quite a bit um, to get that to stick properly on there. Absolutely. Uh, help me to help guys. Dennis, thank you for hanging out. Uh, I appreciate all of the comments here, guys. And we're going to be testing out this format. So if you like this format, let us know. Um, and uh, being more on camera than just presenting with slides. Uh, we do have our YouTube lives and we do Facebook lives almost weekly as well, which are a little bit in this format, but we still love the slide format for these webinars just because it's so much information. And just like I said, now it's uh, 3.37 and I said we were gonna be done at three. So we're going a little bit long, but guys, thank you so much. Uh, and I'll hopefully see you on the next one. Um, perfect, Karen loves the format, just loves it, loves it. Um, Melissa says this helps a, a great amount. Yes, Wanda, thumbs up. So thank you guys. Thank you guys for hanging out. We're going to be doing more of these. These webinars happen every other week uh, at, right here at Thursdays, 2 p.m. Eastern. Uh, and next time we'll be here on camera with you as well just to help out as much as we can. But until then, guys, happy pressing. I'm Dave, and I hope to see you soon.